Hello. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to one type of nucleophilic addition reaction to, uh, al or to aldehydes and ketones that can be used to make alcohols. Um, in this reaction, whoops, reaction arrow, not a resonance arrow there. And this reaction uses something that oh, I did not like that. This is a reaction with a hydride nucleophile. So let's draw what I mean here by hydride. Okay. And we get an alcohol. We have a new bond at that carbon, and that new bond is to hydrogen. So in my previous video, I talked about the generic nucleophilic addition reaction. Uh, so here, our nucleophile is equal to hydride, which is H minus. Oh, now, uh, you may uh, think about uh, the hydrogen ion, and you might think that you are just limited to H plus, uh, the proton. Uh, but actually, uh, this thing this thing is a proton. Uh, the hydrogen cation, but we call it a proton because it's basically it's a proton. Um, but instead of hydrogen atom, here's hydrogen atom, losing an electron to become H plus, hydrogen can gain an electron and become hydrogen with a lone pair and a negative charge. And this thing is called a hydride anion. So, and a hydride anion kind of looks like it, it, it's got the things required to be a, a pretty good nucleophile. It's got a lone pair, it's negative charge. Uh, it's on a thing that's not particularly electronegative, so, you know, it would be happier if it formed a bond. Um, uh, unfortunately, hydride is generally a particularly poor nucleophile. It's a really strong base, uh, and so if there's any kind of acid-base reaction that could happen, hydride's going to do that first. So hydride is generally a poor nucleophile. So if we want to use... Um, hydride as a nucleophile, we need to use things that are hydride equivalents, so things that can or, or act like they are hydride, or what I'm going to talk about here are hydride transfer reagents. And these are compounds that are capable of delivering hydride equivalents to uh, Electrophiles, and so there are multiples of these, um, but we're only going to talk about two. Uh, and they have very similar structures. The borohydride anion, which uh, has the, the formula BH4 minus, and the aluminum hydride anion. which has the symbol, come on, let's get this aluminum, where's my, grab my aluminum hydride, here we go, uh, which has the symbol ALH4, and it, again, is an, an anion. The structure of this borohydride anion is a boron with four hydrogens around it. And from a formal charge standpoint, boron 
has the negative charge in the center. But in fact, um, you know, hydrogen has all the electron density in this reagent. Uh, hydrogen is more electronegative than boron. And this bond is polarized. Oops. But the, the direction. Polarized towards hydrogen atom. Which is what's gonna, which is gonna make the hydrogen atom nucleophilic. Uh, the aluminum hydride anion is very similar, except we swap boron with aluminum. And aluminum is the element in the periodic table right below boron, so we're going to expect these to be pretty similar in structure uh, and similar in behavior, uh, but maybe not quite similar in, in the way they react. Uh, well, similar in the way they react, but one of them might be more reactive or less selective, and we'll get to that. Um, for the most part, both of these things behave the same way when they come in contact with a uh, aldehyde or a ketone. So you know, again, I'm just going to use uh, something generic at the moment. But in the next couple of videos, we'll talk about both reagents, uh, well, and and sources of both reagents because the anions themselves you, you, they need a counter ion to be a, a, a full compound. Uh, but just in order to present a, gen gener uh, a generic mechanism, I'm going to use borohydride. And sodium borohydride uh, is generally this reaction is done in, let me do this a different way. Generally, this reaction is done in an alcohol solvent. Oops. And uh, some folks will tell you that the mechanism involves the, uh, the alcohol solvent being the proton source. And some folks will tell you that, no, you need to add acid to neutralize the thing. Uh, I will tell you in practice when I do sodium boral hydride reductions, I almost always add acid to neutralize the reaction. So I'm going to use acid as an explicit proton source um, for this reaction. Uh, so the way the borohydride anion and the aluminum hydride anion behaves the same way, donates a hydride or transfers a hydride, if you will, uh, involves one of the boron hydrogen bonds acting as a nucleophile here. Let's use this one, it's a little bit neater. And it's actually the electron pair in the boron hydrogen bond. It, that, it is being the nucleophile. So this is something I would call a sigma bond nucleophile. Now you may not have encountered something that is a sigma bond nucleophile where it's an electron pair in a sigma bond that is the, the nucleophilic electron pair. <clears throat> These things, you're, you're going to encounter others in this video series, um, and they are an important class of nucleophile in all kinds of organic reactions. This reaction then follows the generic mechanism that I presented in the previous video. We have nucleophilic attack generating an alkoxide intermediate. And then that alkoxide intermediate reacts uh, with our proton source. And, I'm, and I am using uh, aqueous acid here, the hydronium cation. Uh, you know, if you, if you were doing a reaction in the lab and you had a specific acid like hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid, you could show that in your mechanism. Uh, I'm using generic acid. Picks up a proton. 
In the next video, I'm going to go into more detail about the sodium boral hydride reduction uh, and this uh, as a way of converting ketones to alcohols. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the types of, of uh, carbonyl compounds it reacts with and what kinds of alcohols it makes. And then I'll consider or uh, continue on to the lithium aluminum hydride reaction. Thank you for watching.